You're retrying to watch a movie in your bedroom or take a video call in your home office and the video keeps buffering or the call keeps dropping. You have a perfect Wi-Fi signal in the living room right next to your router, but just one room away, it's a digital dead zone. This is an incredibly common frustration in modern homes, and the solution is often a simple device called a Wi-Fi extender. If you have Verizon Fios, their branded network extender is a powerful tool to blanket your entire home in a strong, reliable wireless signal. But just plugging it into a random outlet won't magically fix your problems. In fact, improper placement is the number one reason people think their extender doesn't work. The setup process is actually very straightforward, but there is a specific science to where you place it and how you connect it to your main router. I'm going to walk you through the entire Verizon Wi-Fi extender setup from start to finish. We'll cover the unboxing, the critical placement strategy that most people get wrong, the physical and wireless connection process, and finally, how to verify it's working perfectly. Let's kill those dead zones and give you seamless Wi-Fi in every corner of your house. The first and most crucial step happens before you even take the extender out of the box, planning its location. This is the secret to a successful extender installation. An extender works by receiving the existing Wi-Fi signal from your router, amplifying it, and then rebroadcasting it. If you place the extender in the dead zone itself, it will have a weak, poor quality signal to work with, and it will just rebroadcast a weak, poor quality signal. The ideal placement is in what I call the Goldilocks zone. This is a spot that is roughly halfway between your main Fios router and the area where you need better coverage. This spot should still have a decent Wi-Fi signal from the router, maybe two out of four bars on your phone. A good way to test this is to use the Wi-Fi analyzer in your phone's settings as you walk through your home. Find a power outlet in that halfway point. Also, avoid placing the extender in corners, inside cabinets, or on the floor. Try to place it out in the open and elevate it on a shelf or tabletop for the best performance. Once you've identified the perfect outlet, you can unbox the extender. You'll find the extender unit itself, a power adapter, and usually an Ethernet cable, which we may or may not use depending on your setup. Now, let's get it connected. There are two primary ways to connect your Verizon extender to your router, wirelessly or with an Ethernet cable. The wireless method is the most common and convenient. Simply plug the extender into the power outlet you carefully selected in that Goldilocks zone. Give it a minute to boot up. The lights on the front will begin to cycle. You're looking for the light to eventually settle on a color. A solid white light is often the indicator that it's powered on and ready for setup. A blinking white or blue light usually means it's trying to connect. Now, you need to initiate the pairing process with your router. On most newer Fios routers, there's a dedicated WPS button which stands for Wi-Fi Protected Setup. It's usually on the side or back of the router. Press and hold this WPS button for about two seconds until you see a light on the router start to blink. Then, within two minutes, press and hold the WPS button on the extender itself. The lights on both devices will flash as they communicate. After a few minutes, the light on the extender should turn a solid color, often blue or green, indicating a successful connection. This means it has wirelessly linked to your main router and is now extending the network. The second connection method, which is more reliable and offers better performance, is a wired connection using a MACA adapter. Many Verizon extenders can use the existing coaxial cable wiring in your home to create a super fast, super stable backhaul connection to the router. This is like giving the extender its own private highway to the router instead of using the crowded public wireless airwaves. For this, you need a coaxial cable outlet in your chosen Goldilocks zone location. You'll plug the extender into power and then connect a coaxial cable from the wall outlet to the coax in port on the extender. 
The extender and router will automatically recognize each other over the coaxial cable and establish a connection that is far superior to a wireless link. This is the pro installer method and is highly recommended if you have the coaxial outlet in the right place. Once the extender is connected, either wirelessly or via coaxial, it will create a new extended network. By default, it often uses the same network name as your main router but might add a suffix. The smartest feature of modern systems is that they can create a seamless mesh network. This means your devices will automatically switch between the router and the extender based on which has the stronger signal, all while using the same single network name and password. You shouldn't have to manually switch networks as you move around your house. The final step is verification and troubleshooting. How do you know it's working? First, check the light on the extender. A solid blue or green light typically means a good connection. A red or orange light indicates a problem it is too far from the router or there is a connection failure. If you see a red light, you need to move the extender closer to the router and try the setup again. Second, the real test is to take your phone or laptop to the area that was previously a dead zone. Check your Wi-Fi signal strength. It should now be strong. Run a speed test to compare the results to what you were getting before. A common issue is that devices sometimes stubbornly stay connected to the weaker router signal instead of jumping to the stronger extender signal. If this happens, you can try temporarily turning off the Wi-Fi on your device and turning it back on, which will force it to reconnect to the strongest available signal. You can also manage your network through the MyFios app, which often shows you a map of your connected devices and which network node they are using. With your extender properly placed and connected, you should notice an immediate difference. Video calls will be clear, streaming will be buffer free, and you'll wonder how you ever lived with those frustrating dead zones. You've successfully expanded the reach of your home network, creating a robust and reliable Wi-Fi environment for work, entertainment, and everything in between. You can also manage your network through the MyFios app, which often shows you a map of your connected devices and which network node they are using. With your extender properly placed and connected, you should notice an immediate difference. Video calls will be clear, streaming will be buffer free, and you'll wonder how you ever lived with those frustrating dead zones. You've successfully expanded the reach of your home network, creating a robust and reliable Wi-Fi environment for work, entertainment, and everything in between. You've successfully expanded the reach of your home network, creating a robust and reliable Wi-Fi environment for work, entertainment, and everything in between.